Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mihi from Propio Junction and in this video we will be talking about the elbow complex. So guys, now let's talk about the elbow joint in detail. So your elbow joint is made up of three bones, humerus, radius and ulna. So guys, we will be talking about all the bones in detail. So the first bone is your humerus bone. So we will be talking only about the distal part of the humerus, not the proximal part because only distal part makes your elbow joint. So guys, now let's talk about the bony landmarks of the humerus. So you got two epicondyles, your lateral epicondyle and your medial epicondyle. So guys, you need your epicondyles to provide you with the sides for the muscle attachment. So you got two flexor groups in your, sorry, you got two muscle groups in your uh, forearm compartment. So that is flexor and extensor muscle groups. Okay, so your flexor muscle group arises or originates from the medial epicondyle and the extensor group arises from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus so they are giving you the attachment sites for the muscle so guys now let's talk about the trochlea and the capitulum so they are actually the articular surfaces of your elbow joint so trochlea is more medially oriented and capitulum is more laterally oriented and then you got three fossas guys uh, from the anterior view you can see you got radial fossa and the coronoid fossa and from the posterior view you got olecranon fossa so if i summarize the bony landmarks of the distal end of the humerus so you got trochlea capitulum radial fossa coronoid fossa olecranon fossa lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle the next bone is the ulna bone and we will only consider the proximal part of the ulna bone so now let's see the bony landmarks in the proximal part of the ulna bone. So you got the trochlear notch as you can see in this picture. So actually trochlear notch articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. And then you got the coronoid process and you can see it is a bony projection. So when you do flexion the coronoid process actually lodges into your coronoid fossa of the humerus. Next is the radial notch of the ulna. So at the radial notch, the ulna bone articulates with the head of the radius. And the next is the olecranon process. So when you do extension of your elbow, so actually your olecranon process lodges into your olecranon fossa of your humerus. And if you see the proximal segment of the radius, you can see the head of the radius. So the head of the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. And you can also see the radial tuberosity. So on radial tuberosity, you got your bicep brachii tendon. Your bicep brachii tendon attaches on the radial tuberosity. And you also got the shaft of the radius. So guys, now let's summarize the bony landmarks of the radius and the ulna. So on ulna you got the trochlear notch, so the trochlear notch articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. Then you got coronoid process, so when you do flexion of the elbow, so at the end range of the flexion, the coronoid process lodges into your coronoid fossa. And then you got the radial notch, so radial notch, on radial notch, the ulna articulates with the head of the radius so and then you got the olecranon process so your or when you do the extension and at the end range of the extension the olecranon process lodges into the olecranon fossa of the humerus and on radius you got the head of the radius which articulates with the capitulum of the humerus and then the radial tuberosity and the shaft of the radius so guys until now I was referring the whole structure as a joint but actually if you see it's a complex so if you see the elbow complex it got three joints humero ulnar, humero radial and proximal radio ulnar joint. So guys now let's take every joint in detail I will tell you about the articulating surfaces, joint capsule, ligaments and stabilizing structures which is helping you to stabilize the joint. First is the humero ulnar joint. So if you see the articulating surfaces, it's the trochlea of the humerus which is convex 
and the trochlear notch of the ulna which is concave. So guys now let's talk about the humeroradial joint. So the articulating surfaces are the capitulum of the humerus and the head of the radius. So if you see the head of the radius it has a slightly cup shaped concave surface called the fovea if you see from the superior view and it is surrounded by a rim and the head of the radius is concave and the capitulum of the humerus is convex. So guys the last joint is the proximal radio ulnar joint and the articulating surfaces are the head of the radius and the radial notch of the ulna and the movement available at this joint is the pronation and supination. So guys now let's talk about the joint capsule and all the three joints humeroradial, humero ulnar and the proximal radio ulnar joint are enclosed within a single joint capsule and you need that joint capsule to stabilize your elbow complex. So guys now let's talk about the ligaments of the elbow complex. So the first ligament is the ulnar collateral ligament and ulna is on the medial side so you can also say this ligament as medial collateral ligament. So your ulnar collateral ligament contains three band, the anterior band, the posterior band and the inferior band. The inferior band is also known as oblique band. Functions of the ulnar collateral ligament is that it will resist the valgus force, the force you get on the elbow laterally. And second function is that it will limit the extension at the end range of the elbow extension movement. So this ligament will also help you to provide the reinforcement of the humero ulnar articulation. So guys the next ligament is the lateral collateral ligament complex. So this complex contains three ligament. First is the radial collateral ligament. Second one is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and the third one is the annular ligament. So guys the first ligament is the annular ligament and it encircles the head of the radius so it keeps the radius head in position. The next ligament is the radial collateral ligament. So as you can see in this picture it extends from the inferior aspect of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it merges with the annular ligament. And guys the function of this radial collateral ligament is to provide reinforcement for the humeroradial articulation and the second function is it will provide you with the it will provide you the resistance to the varus force the force you get medially on the elbow. So guys the last ligament of this complex is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. So as you can see in this picture it extends from the inferior aspect of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the edge of the annular ligament and inserts into your lateral surface of the ulna. So the function of this ligament is to provide you with the posterior lateral stability and also it helps you to it helps you to uh, reinforce the articulation of the humerus and the ulna. So guys now let's talk about the carrying angle or the cubitus valgus. So to get this angle you have to do full extension of your arm with supination. So this angle is between the axis of the humerus and the vertical axis of your forearm. And it is caused by the articulating surface of your humero ulnar joint. Carrying angle permits the forearm to clear the hips in swinging movement during walking and the average angle in full elbow extension is 15 degree. So guys in women the carrying angle is more because of the wider pelvis. So guys we got two abnormal carrying angles. So the first one is the excessive cubitus valgus in which there is increase in the carrying angle and second one is the cubitus varus in which there is decrease in the carrying angle.